Black and silver scratched keys rattle over two decades of cross-country drives through snow blizzards blanketing the coop's windows. Rumbling alongside, block-long trucks propped on 18 massive wheels fight angry hissing winds, while shouldering large tin-canned goods to eager mom and pop delis in New York, bursting with morning bagel sandwiches hidden under generous smears of salty cream cheese two fingers high. Toasted poppy seeds pepper the tops. Steam rises up from inside the thin, crinkled wrapping paper. Outside, yellow checkered taxi cabs honk like hungry flocks of geese, drowning the pitter-patter of shiny leather shoes on wet black top, and mumbled conversations leave a wafting trail of musky colognes and flowery perfumes in the crisp, damp air. Heading in four directions, young and old do their best to follow their unattainable dreams while being burdened by stubborn credit card payments for food eaten weeks ago and squealing radiators in century-old brick tenements with worn concrete steps and chipped fire escapes once occupied by residents when juicy char-grilled hamburgers dripping in melted tangy cheddar cheese cost 50 cents and an overwhelming feeling of security that everything was going to be okay. Because the good guys won the war, and factories joined in the joy, billowing success through brick smokestacks proudly pointing toward the sky. While in other parts of the world, transportation looked more like a tired old ox the color of chalk, towing a pyramid of honeydew melons, or a family of four balancing on a rickety bicycle, with air hissing out of one very bald tire as they pedaled their way to the bustling fish market.